All right, everybody, one, two, one, two. Welcome, welcome to the show. We're going to have to do some different things re regarding uh, music. Uh, they've been running through my videos with a fine tooth hater comb, looking for any and every reason to send me a reminder that uh, the video is not monetized. I, I think they... They lost track on the fact that they already demonetized me. But every day they send me like three or four notifications, and it's just, it's concerning. Uh, three or four different notifications about this video. Uh, the visibility has been affected of this video, but not that video because of a copyright issue, of playing copywritten material during a broadcast, which is something that YouTube was built on, <laughs> okay? But... Uh, however, uh, h here we are. So we're in 2024, and uh, we should come to expect a lot more, okay? But what we wanted to look at tonight was something that came to my attention um, from watching a video from another content creator who um, reaches back into the stories of the old school artists and uh, does little presentations uh, based on what she finds. And she mentioned this book during her uh, presentation, or she mentioned an excerpt from this book. And I'm going to tell you, from the time she mentioned it, I was dead set on trying to find out everything I could about that excerpt and everybody involved in it. And um, the first step in that was to actually get a hold of the book, and that is Inside the Shy Lights Music, okay? Okay. Uh, just give me one second. Let me make sure that the sound and everything is going well on y'all end. One second, please. Okay, okay, one, two, one, two, one, two. How was that? How's that? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. How's, how's the sound? How's the level? What's going on? One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. All right, y'all. So, uh, 
so yes, so we're going to get into reading this book. Uh, it's called Inside the Shy Lights Music. It's by Darren Kuby. Some of you may have seen him on the um, Judge Lake Fraternity Court show. And um, I remember seeing that episode, as a matter of fact. But just nothing connected with me uh, that, you know, he would, he would have written or had a story, anything like the excerpt that I heard the sister read. So I get this book, and let me just be honest with you, it's a lot smaller than I expected for it to be. It's no bigger than an ebony magazine. It's, it really should be a magazine, okay? It's like 70-something pages long. Now, the policy that I have um, taken concerning the reading of books has changed from trying to read the entirety of a book to trying to read enough of a book to help promote that book and cause for the author of that book to receive more publicity and therefore more sales for their book. Uh, Because, you know, audiobooks exist, so we don't want to step on toes with that. However, you don't have to get five pages into this book before he comes right on with this story, this magnificent story involving satanic rituals and the music business. Now, for those who are not familiar with the Shy Lights music, I'm in your company. At, you know, at many times on this channel, I've, I've bragged about my soul music and R&B classic music acumen. And I've said, you know, if it's, if it's old classic soul and r and B, I'm up on it. But the Shy Lights, I just, I don't know a lot of their songs. I know that uh, Beyonce sampled those horns, right? Or, or rather, whoever produced that track sampled those horns for Beyonce's Crazy in Love. Da, 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 you know, those horns or whatever. And I think they made, oh, girl. It'd be in trouble if you left me now. So, you know, they've got a couple of hits. They have quite a few hits, actually. So I said, well, they've probably got some songwriter secret songs that we've not uh, discussed. So we're going to really end up getting into the songwriter secret of things. That's going to be um, what we're going to spin off and do. But here's the important part. Everything has to deal with soul salvation or the edification of the body of Christ. So how is this that? Well, for one thing, you know, when people write books about their experiences with satanic ritual abuse, who is qualified to examine their stories and discuss those stories and come to some conclusions concerning those stories? Should we wait for the Uh, psychologists and psychiatrists and the theologians of the world to come to some agreement on some things so they can sit down and hash out what we should and should not believe or, you know, what we should do about the victims and what about when the victims themselves become so broken that they turn into abusers. I know some folks have been watching that and I saw a few episodes of that also that, uh, Nickelodeon expose. I was glad to see the YouTube truther, and I'm sorry, again, it's no slight on our uh, female truthers out here fighting the good fight because there are, you know, quite a few who deserve their due. But for some reason, her name is escaping me, but she wears a tinfoil hat out of mockery of the conspiracy truther trope that, you know, we wear tinfoil hats. But she really gives some really uh, great uh, 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 deep dives. And she's the first person that I had heard break the story about Nickelodeon and Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider, formerly a head of the class uh, that used to star Robin Givens, who ended up being Mike Tyson's ex-wife. Dan Schneider, the fat guy, quote unquote, from head of the class, ended up being a big time children's show producer and did many a uh, Boris, uh, abhorrible things um, and aberrant things to the young people that worked there. Uh, and of course, when the ID channel or um, 
Max or whoever it is does these exposés, they're not qualified to rightly divide that information to come to any conclusions and to, you know, to, to, uh, 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 to really make uh, commentary one way or the other. So they present these things with an a-religious edge. The worldview of the producers or whoever it is that makes these shows and, you know, puts them on the ID channel or Cinemax usually falls in line, you know, once you go high enough to the top of the producer food chain, their beliefs fall in line with the same Luciferian beliefs that were at play at Nickelodeon at the end of the day, right? So certain things they cannot say. So you can't expect for Max or the ID channel or anybody like that to give an accurate right dividing of this subject. But yet it's a real subject. There are really satanic communities. You know, satanic abuse is real. Ritual abuse is real. The abuse of little ones is a, is a key part of satanic ritual abuse. What Aleister Crowley uh, would claim was that the way to get the most powerful evil spirits to help you out was you had to do the vilest thing on earth. And the vilest things on earth always would involve, uh, involve the defilement of little ones. The littler, the more irreprehensible. So there you have that. So, you know, while a lot of people is talking about Puffy and, you know, will, will he be the next Jeffrey E., the Epster? Will he be like that? Will he get Ept before they actually put him in cuffs, before they put them bracelets on his, on his arms, the ones he don't want? Again, there's a, there's a Luciferian chain of command that most people don't understand. So you can't expect for corporate or network uh, 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 content producers to understand it. And you, you certainly can't understand, uh, uh, you, pardon me, you, you certainly cannot expect for the content creators who are down here, boots on the ground, you know, getting it how they live, getting it out the mud, finding out things the best way they can. You can't expect for them to have a body of occult knowledge just sitting there to draw from. So who then is qualified to look at these stories and say, well, you know, there's something spiritual to be learned here from this story. There's a warning here for families that are involved in secret societies and secret orders because a lot of times that secrecy is a good way to hide child abuse of the vilest kind. So now whether we come to the conclusion that we think Mr. QB is in his full capacities or if we think Mr. QB is perhaps damaged you know, there's an old truth or saying that I like and I feel it. I feel it more than anybody can know. And that's that just because you're paranoid doesn't mean nobody's out to get you. One of the quickest ways to get paranoia, which is a spirit of fear, a spirit of irrational fear, false evidence appearing real, that's paranoia defined. But one real true way to get paranoid is to have people following you and tapping your phone and sending you infiltrators and sending you into situations that have been already set up for you. And I've dealt with my fair share of all of the above and it's given me a degree, admittedly, of paranoia. Admittedly. And I cannot say that anything near what uh, happened to Mr. QB happened to me. So I do think it's fair if we see a little bit of the man that's behind this very short, brief writing. Let's, let's see his appearance on, or let's at least see the, um, the uh, 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 preview or the promo for his appearance on the Lauren Lake show. 
So let's do that. Just a little taste. And yeah, you know, if you if you worth your weight in truthing, then you might be worth following and tapping and setting up and all that type of stuff. But unfortunately, you know, what the enemy is able to do is to cause for folks who are not in that position to sometimes think that they are. But that is because there is someone that's out to get, to, to get you. Same person out to get me. And your mammy and your pappy and your grandmammy and your grandpappy and your grandbabies and your aunts and your aunties and your nieces and your nephews and your cousins too. There's one who's out to kill, steal, and destroy. So now let's listen to this tale from this man who claims that he experienced what it was like to be the son of a man who had sold his soul to Satan. Now let's get a little brief look at the man behind the story first and foremost. Let me just, well, first and foremost, first and foremost. Okay, now I want to just make sure that the mic transfer is right here when I switch on over. One two 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 okay good okay I see the mic there all right it's a little bit lower here okay let's do something about that real quick the mic and um you know this is a real short book but i'm telling you uh the publishers told him well since since the book is this short you need to get right to it he gets right to it he gets right to okay there we go that's more there we go all right that's better right that's good and loud now okay so now now let's look at the screen together and let's take a look at mr qb on Judge Lake. Uh, right here, Friday on Paternity Court. Okay, let's see what this says. Let's try it out. Today on Paternity Court. Why do you feel that you are the biological daughter of legendary singer Fidel Jones of the Shy Life? She came out of the woodwork. She was in it for the money. None of us know her. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Who are you? You're, you're, you're full of crap. I know there are huge royalties at stake. The rights of their music could well go into the millions. You claim you are his biological son. Why is it your last name is not Jones? Hey, you're, you're in it for the money. She's in it for the money. I know there are three sides to this story. I'm not the bad guy. I don't like that. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, yeah it seemed like I do. I, I vaguely remember seeing that episode. Okay, now, so, um, so, obviously, on pardon me, obviously, per... Per that little uh, clip there, he and his siblings are embroiled in some battle for the um, for his father's uh, whatever part of the money that his father is owed from being a part of that group. Now, what we know about a lot of those legendary groups from back in those days and times is that in today's era, very few of them own their masters or the rights. Uh, the the uh, the rights to their material, okay. You know, it's the songwriter. That's when the songwriter's secret is really the big deal. It's the songwriter who um, can continue to get paid over the years, and and who, if he maintains the rights to his to the song that he's written, if he maintains the rights to his lyrics, then the songwriter, you know, stands to gain um, a great deal of money in time. But you have to be listed as one of the songwriters and receive points to that effect. What a lot of the artists did back then was in exchange for their points, which they didn't understand, this wasn't explained to them, so they'd be offered a Cadillac or a new house 
or something lucrative, but certainly something that would not um, appreciate in value in time. So, uh, so let's look now, if we can. Um, hold on one second. Okay, let's let's look at Mr. Uh, let's look at Darren's post here from his own channel where he he did a he complained about um, what happened on the show. So let's check that out, and then I'm going to go directly into the reading, I'm trying to give folks a chance to get in here. Hi, this is Darren QB Creedell Jones I'm from the music group The Shy Lights. This video is going to be a quick. Hi, this is Darren QB Creedell Jones I'm from the music group The Shy Lights. This video is going to be a quick um, investigational request to Judge Lauren Lake in reference to having a official genealogical investigation done on Triplet and any further individuals who are going to try to appear on the Judge Lauren Lake fraternity court show in reference to being illegitimate children of my father, Creedell Jones. My father did not in any way tell Triplett that he was his child. He gave him no no indication that he was a child of his at all. And Triplett stated that my father gave him $100. My father gave everyone $100. Every fan that ever walked up to my father, um, it was known and it was almost a customary action for my father to give a hundred dollars to a lot of the fans who walked up and asked for autographs as a gesture of showing kindness to potential fans that were um, the fans of his music from the shy light. So that had nothing to do with any any assertions whatsoever um, of my father's trying to acknowledge him as a son of his. Uh, if, if my father fathered this guy named Triplet on this earth, my father would have told him that, that that he was his child. My father would not have never told this person that he was not his child. Any child that my father ever had, um, other than my mother's marriage to my father in 1978, um, he was only married twice. He divorced his first wife in 1975 and married my mother in 1978. And he stayed married to her up until his death. So any child he ever had would have been notified by my father and not only my father, but by his own family. So I'm going to um, request Judge Lauren Lake to actually do a genealogical investigation. And we're going to start. I want to call her right now. Okay, at this point, I'm assuming that he's placing the call. Well, we don't want dead air, so let's see what's going on here. Doesn't seem to be... Um... And I'm requesting that to be done immediately. Thank you. Okay, to see, argue that or like to be able just... to challenge their statements. And okay, by them see, being... Okay, it seems like he's just... He's leaving a message on her on her machine now he's now this is his channel it's got 41 subscribers um and it's terrible how these people are spelling but you know you can imagine that uh education wasn't a priority when your dad's a big r&b soul superstar now i asked chat gpt real quick to just kind of bring me up to speed the shy lights were a highly successful soul group from the 1960s and 1970s i know they were called the highlights and then they figured out a way to give chicago their hometown some props so then they called themselves the shy 
lights. They were um, known for their smooth harmonies and romantic ballads. ballads. Some of their biggest selling songs include, like I said, Oh Girl. Um, and Oh, Have You Seen Her? That'd be her biggest song sampled by MC Hammer. Have you seen her? Tell me, have you seen her? And then uh, Soulful Strut. Uh, that's a break beat that people use. I, I'm pretty stoned out of my mind. And Are You My Woman? So those would be their top five uh, biggest selling, well, some of their biggest selling songs. So now so let's go to, and these would be the songs that we're going to look to first for songwriter secret songs unless you have a suggestion. Like Big Sister Elaine, um, who did send in a suggestion. And we'll, we'll have to pull it in um, and be sure and look at that when we actually do go through the songs. Tonight, we're not going to go through the songs. We're just going to check out this, um, this overview. Well, we're going to check out this book and do an overview of Inside the Shy Lights Music. So let's, let us begin. Are you ready? And you're all tucked in? And we don't need the screen. Well, I don't know. We may need the screen. So we'll, we'll leave it like it is. Maybe we'll need the screen. Might have to pull up something. Okay. So we might as well start, start from the very top because it, it's not much. Okay. Dedication. I dedicate this book to the legendary exploited entertainers in our families who struggle to stop legacy abuse throughout entertainment and music. I would also like to, ded like to dedicate this book to my father, Creed L. Jones from the Shy Lights, and his wife and widow, Deborah Jones, my mother. To all those who believe in justice, equality, honesty, integrity, and great entertainment, with unity and reform, we can work together for a brighter tomorrow and a rewarding future. An overview of the Shy Lights music. The way we look and the talents we have are God-given. However... How we use those talents is what defines our journey. Being a born star does not guarantee an easy route. To make a mark in a world where hundreds of thousands of talented individuals strive to shine, indeed it takes determination and hard work to be amongst the few who are to be remembered for centuries. My father, Creedel Red Jones. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get a look at him. In particular, Creedale Red Jones. Creedale. We've been making up names for a long time. It's not new. Creedale Jones. Oh, shy lights. It's not new. Y'all young peoples, don't let your elders shame you about their names. We've been doing this a long time. Okay. There he is. There he is back in the day. All right. He says, my father, Creedell Red Jones, was amongst the few who managed to cast a solid impression on the music industry. Even though he lived a life different from what he deserved, his contribution to the music world will never be forgotten. It all started in 1959. I'm telling y'all, he's about, he about to kick right into it. Get your snacks. Get some of that. Good popping corn. Here we go. It all started in 1959 in his final year of high school. He, along with my mother, Deborah Jones, and friends, Robert Lester and Marshall Thompson, performed in a band that went by the name of the Shy Lights. Together, the band members attended Hyde Park High School in Chicago, Illinois. The band produced numerous songs that locked spots in the top 10, hit top singles, and the Billboard Hot Chart, the Billboard Hot Chart 100. The group with Robert Lester and Eugene Records was originally named Chanteurs, French for singers, which was uh, renamed shortly after my father and Marshall Thompson joined. Originally, Marshall and my father were in the group Desideros. Its new name was the High Lights. Unfortunately, the name had to be changed again because it turned out that the High Lights was already registered to someone else. 
the band members found a way of recognizing their hometown and changed it to the Shy Lights. Marshall was responsible for managing the group. Fellow group member Eugene Records, isn't it something to have the last name Records and to end up in the record business? That's interesting. You know, there are, there are those who say that the synagogue, well, those who say that um, the children of Satan, like they call him the father of lies, so he has children, that his children are already pre-selected. But then that would take away from the idea of us having free will and of someone being able to save uh, or, or to have their soul saved, you know, um, regardless of anything outside of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So we had to make room for all the scripture to fit. But I do think that it's interesting that sometimes the names that people are given end up having to do with the lives that they end up living. So the group with Roster, with pardon me, the group with Robert Lester and Eugene Records was originally called, uh, named the Chanteurs. Okay, its new name was the Highlights. Okay, Highlights was already registered to somebody. So the band uh, members found a way of recognizing their hometown, changed it to the Shylights. Marshall was responsible for managing the group. Fellow group member Eugene Records wrote several songs, and my father was the bass baritone singer. ba 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 boom Although Eugene wrote the majority of the songs, there were several others that the group wrote together. Let me see what Eugene records look like. La, 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 means I love you. There you go. It's Eugene Record, man. Record. Ain't no S at the end. Come on, sucker. Jive time, sucker. All right, here we go. All right. Eugene wrote the majority of the songs. That's the songwriter. There were several others that the group wrote together. Got to put some faces with these peepers. Undisputedly. The Shy Lights ruled the R&B industry for decades. Well, there'd be a lot of spinning around groups that would sha la 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 deny that. So, here we go. Let Me Be the Man My Daddy Was was the first song that served to be the band's claim to fame. The group had a long list of singles that were sung and em enjoyed by fans of R&B music. The first song that made it to the top hit charts was Give More Power to the People. Oh, girl, was their second single, selling over three million copies. And the list just goes on and on. Hold on one second, let me blow my nose. All right, you there? You still there? You there? You there? All right, let's see. It says, in 1968, wait a minute, hold on. Old Girl was their second single selling over 3 million copies, and the list just goes on and on. In 1968, the Shy Lights signed a contract with Brunswick Records. Now, Wick sometimes, sometimes has to do with witch, Wiccan and witch. Uh, share a, a direct etymological connection. But let's just look at the logo real quick if we can because a lot of times that can help you, man. Brunswick Records. It sounds familiar. I can't picture it in my head. The label. Let's look at it. Oh, well, there would be a little pentagram there to to say, well, maybe you're not so far off, Mr. Jackson. Maybe you're not. Anyway. Okay, so they signed a contract with Brunswick Records and the songs they produced under this label took them to new heights of popularity, which means 
here they come. After eight years later, in 1978, my father began having some issues being part of the band. In no particular order, this book will outline the different issues and problems faced not only by my father, but by the Shy Lights Music Group, my family, and myself as well. What could have been that was bothering old Credell? The Rehearsal, page 9. One day, the Jackson Five came to our house for a quote-unquote rehearsal. That's what they called it. They were asked to go into the house to pick my dad up and practice a while before the world tour with the Shy Lights. So Shy Lights and the Jackson Five world tour. I don't remember that. Jackson Five, Sin Five, and Shy Lights. I mean, somebody had to open no shade, world tour. Didn't know about that, 1978. The Jackson Five performed at the Chicago Chaparral Lounge. That's a lounge. That ain't no world tour. In Chicago with the Shy Lights headlining. Okay, so they, they worked together. We can see that much. Um, let's see. They've had other tours. Okay. Uh, let me see. Well, we can do it like this. Um, it's in 1978. Well, let, let's, let's not stop the story because we, we're, we're almost there, believe it or not. So let's assume that they had this tour. We're going to look it up. We're going to check it out. So they were asked to go into the house to pick my dad up. His dad, remember, is Creedale of the Shy Lights. That's old Creedale right there, Red. They called him Red because he was a little, a little lightish. That's what we call lightish, lightish ones. Uh, okay. For folks that don't know about it. Now you know. Okay. Says all five members. Okay, to pick up my dad and practice a while before the world tour with the Shy Lights. All five members. That's Randy, Jermaine, Jackie, he naming them. Marlon and Tito were there. That's five. That's five right there. Randy, Jermaine, Jackie, Marlon, and Tito were there. They arrived together in a black limousine while Michael arrived in a separate one. Now, at this time, I'm imagining that this was when Michael was with them and they were grown and toured together. Okay. Okay. It says, I believe. Okay, it says, uh, uh, they, parked in they parked in front of our house, walked in and began to talk about how they were going to produce this concert and what they needed to make it a memorable one. I believe that Tito, Joe Jackson, and Jermaine Jackson Asked my father for $50,000 because they needed the money to spot the instruments. They were either leasing the instruments or needed to buy new ones for the concert. So my dad gave Joe $25,000 up front and told him he would give him the rest later. The next day, I remember seeing the Jacksons going downstairs to do a rehearsal for the concert. They even had dinner at our house. During the session, my sisters and I, when we're nine, six, and I were five, so missed, when they were nine, six, and I was five. Okay, okay, here it goes. During the session, my sisters and I, when they were nine and six, and I was five, we were brought down to the entertainment room located in the bottom basement of our house. My mother was down there at first, but she ended up going upstairs. She didn't want to see it. That's my side. All four members of the Shy Lights, including my dad, Marshall Thompson, Eugene Record, and Robert Lester were there, along with the owner of Brunswick Records, Nathan Trenopole. Also, there was Joe Jackson, 
Each of the Jackson Five, including Randy, Jermaine, Jackie, Marlon, and Tito, and Michael. None of the others caught our attention as much as the new figure, whom none of us recognized, who came in with Nat. Nat Tranople. Now, he spelled his name a different way before. And I noticed that because I wanted to look him up. If we go back to Brunswick Records and we go, well, let's duplicate, duplicate this. And then let's go to all. And then we can find founder. Okay, that's a long time ago. Well, let's just put his name in. Because I don't believe this man was the owner of the label. I think this was someone in management because I think he named him earlier. Okay, here he is, Nat Tarnopol. Let's see, Nat Tarnopol. He played a vital role in producing and shaping R&B music throughout the 1960s. He was an American record producer, he, okay? And he served as the president of Brunswick Records, okay? So that, that uh, actually, actually pans out. See? Check that out. Y'all see that? So that pans out. And guess what? He was born in Detroit, Michigan, uh, oddly enough. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Perhaps we should know about this man. Here he is at Bell Sound Studios in 1960. Okay, so let's move on. So none of the others caught the attention of the children, and that is Creedell's children. So nobody caught their attention as much as the new figure whom none of the kids recognized, who came in with Nat, who the kids did recognize. It was a priest dressed in a satanic black robe with a hood that covered his face. The, downst the downstairs area was one large entertainment room with two smaller rooms that are connected to it. The main room had a pool table and bar, while the other two rooms were simply sitting rooms. There was also a small half bathroom to the side. As I walked into one of the sitting rooms. Now, you, as far as I know, you can say these things on YouTube. They just demonetize you. Uh, uh, we already own that status, so I might as well be able to say it. But I'm going to say it carefully. And also, we don't want to trigger anyone. So he says, as he walked into one of the sitting rooms... He saw his sister being bent over the table and R'd, R worded by Marshall Thompson from behind while Joe Jackson pinned her down. Joe Jackson is the uh, Jackson family patriarch. Once he finished, now this is something, see, you putting, you know, this is something that you could sue for if it was not true. Now, a lot of times they say that when they write these tell-alls and the people don't sue, it's because a lawsuit may bring out certain details that would actually lend credibility to the story that's being told by the victim. So that's why a lot of times when these victims make, make those um, horrendous accusations like Little Rod made and Cassie made concerning the diddler, a lot of times when that happens, um, the accused does not want to fight it because fighting it would only draw out more things, draw out more details. But here we have Marshall Thompson, American singer and musician from the Shy Lights. Here he is. He's got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He wrote a book about it. Last Man Standing, Shy Lights, Marshall Thompson. Interesting. So he says that his sister was being violated by Marshall Thompson from behind while Joe Jackson pinned her down. Once he finished, Marshall got up and then began to hold my sister down by her shoulders while Joe Jackson then began to savagely R her from the front. The other Jackson Five members and the Shy Lights musicians were in the loop 
In other words, they were aware of what was going on in the entertainment room, waiting right next to this room we were in. I tried to stop them, but I was held down by the Jackson 5 members. Get him, Tito. I'm sorry. I started to yell, get off my sister, get off my sister. But he, of course, he was too little. But they weren't bothered one bit. I was quickly subdued by the group who then brought my sister into the main entertainment room where a satanic pentagram was drawn on the floor in white, in white chalk. Does he mean like this one? Does he mean like this one? Does he mean like this one? Being drawn on the floor in white chalk? Something like that. A little, a little, a little taste like that. Okay. Interesting. So he says, yeah, I believe it. And the fact that I believe it makes it very, uh, makes it very terrible that nobody believes this story when this man tells this story and he's had to be on Judge Lauren Lake paternity court. I mean, that means things not think that probably means things aren't going very well in life. So, Dad Creedell, with all the sacrifices that he made, giving up his daughter, making his wife aware of these things. His wife had to be aware because at first she was in the basement, then she left. So she knew what was about to happen. You know, and at the end of that, your, your children fighting over crumbs. You didn't have enough to abundantly leave everybody where it, ain't nobody got to fight. When you're fighting, you're fighting over scraps. But that's how the devil do you. Dish you and dismiss you. Don't even kiss you. Now, here we go. So he said, I tried to stop him, but I was held down by the Jackson 5 members. I started to yell, get off my sister, get off my sister. But they weren't bothered one bit. I was quickly subdued by the group who then brought my sister into the main entertainment room where a satanic pentagram was drawn on the floor in white chalk. They took off all my sister's clothes and placed her on the table at the altar they had created. Then the Jackson 5 members, one by one, began to rape my sister. Each of the Shy Lights members, including my father, raped her next. To make matters worse, as they were holding me down, they raped me as well. All 12 of them were animals as they arred me one by one. I forgot. I wasn't supposed to say it. I'm sorry. It was truly a, ter a, truly a terrifying experience. I was able to escape and go upstairs. How? Why? From the top, from the top of the stairwell, I could see the black hooded priest walking behind Joe and Marshall and they were escorting my sister out of the room where they had just aired her. The satanic priest had a Caucasian infant in his arms who looked to be only about two months old. Joe Jackson reached under the altar and came back up with a dagger and a gold goblet adorned with jewels and rubies. In one swift motion, Joe put the baby on the altar and held it down while Marshall slit the baby's neck. Then Joe Jackson placed the goblet underneath the child's neck and collected its blood. I watched in horror as the baby died soon after having its throat slit. Joe took the blood-filled cup, drank some of it, then passed it around to the other peoples in the room. He first, he first passed it to the members of Jackson 5 who were each in black robes, each member took a sip and passed it to the next person. Now, now this brings to mind the excerpt from the book, Thanks for the Memories, right? Was it, it, was, it, it was Thanks for the Memories, which is Bryce Taylor. There's also the book, um, Transformation of America by Kathy O'Brien. And there's also a book by Candy Jones, wife of talk show host Long John Neville, 
called the uh, the something of Candy Jones. The Control of Candy Jones or something along that line. But all of these books are from women who were uh, presidential models or um, sex kitten, quote unquote, uh, brainwashed MK Ultra victims turned sex slaves who wrote books, tell all books. And in one of the books, and I do believe it was Bryce Taylor's Thanks for the Memories, she, she tells of being carted around by um, Bob hope and bob hope took her backstage at some show maybe it was ed sullivan i don't recall maybe she couldn't recall either but at some show along that line where the jacksons were supposed to perform and before the jacksons were about to perform uh they were uh sodomized each of them um a, a man came in and did this to them and she was uh, aware of it and then immediately after it was over they had to get dressed and go perform and there are those who say that you know that act of ritual abuse because when it's done it it comes from ritual abuse that's the, that's where the idea of it comes from nobody once had the good idea of, oh let's just try something weird that's not the origin of that the origin is from sexual ritual abuse and from the understanding by conjurers that doing the most egregious things that disrespect creation tears the very fabric, the very veil of reality of the third dimension and allows in entities that are anathema to creation. And this is why they do it. This is why Puff do it. This is the fixation with it. It's not just about power. It's not just about, well, let me prove how much power I have over a man. Like Jaguar Wright said, the woman said that Puff exclaimed concerning his domination or alleged domination of Christopher Williams. It's not about power. It's not about, it's not about a, a kink and fetish. Now, certain things that, that, come from trauma and ritual can then become a kink or fetish. Do you understand the difference? But know what came first, the chicken or the egg in this case. It's not as mysterious as the chicken or the egg. It's certain and obvious where it comes from, which is one reason why the movement, the pink hand movement is so religiously vigorous they're very zealous they have the religious zeal of a of, of, of a sanctified person on 10 because they're actually dealing with something that has spiritual significance but let let's move on which is why it's that's why it's a part of satanic ritual part and parcel not and again, you so so. Well, the marriage bed is undefiled. Me and my hood. Well, you and your hood. That's your business. But I'm here to tell you the origins of a thing. Overstand. So let let's just finish this little part here. So he say, Joe Jackson reached under the table. He did that to the baby. So I watched in horror as the baby died soon after having his throat slit. Joe took the blood-filled cup, drank some of it, then passed it around to the other people in the room. He first passed it to the members of Jackson 5 who were each in black robes. Each member took a sip and passed it to the next person. Nat Turnapol, that's the head of the label, president of the label, and the satanic priest took a sip as well. Soon it was the members of the Shy Lights turns to drink from the cup. They were all dressed in red robes and each member took a sip, including my father. I couldn't bear to watch anymore. When I closed the basement door, my mother told me to go upstairs to my room. As I made my way through the kitchen, I saw my mother opening the refrigerator. It was the type that had a freezer on one side and the refrigeration on the other. 
The freezer area of the fridge was stuffed with at least six dead baby, baby, babies. Including the baby I had just seen them murk. The babies were wrapped in plastic and it was a horrific sight. There were even small bodies wrapped in plastic on the counter. I asked my mother what it was just to confirm I wasn't losing my mind. She blatantly said, dead babies. I began crying, unable to believe what I had just heard, but her expressions were blank, stern, and emotionless. She asked me to go to my room upstairs as if I was crying over something petty and not something inhumane. Over the next few days, I witnessed Joe Jackson and Marshall Thompson cut the bodies of the babes they'd slaughtered to please their satanic god. They cut their legs and arms off, placed the limbs in a baking dish, and began to eat the cooked baby's remains. It took me days to overcome the trauma. The shock and horror from everything I witnessed solidified the pain I felt from what was happening. Now, if that ain't the most mind-blowing, now, now the next, now that's that. That ends that chapter. Then it begins FBI and IRS corruption. And I think we're going to stop right there because we got some, th some things to talk about. We have some, some things to speak on here. That was compelling, whether it was true or false. Gave some insight, would you, wouldn't you say, into how things perhaps happened. Interesting that they came to their house. And I've, you know, I was watching, um, I was revisiting Rosemary's Baby for something that I was making for y'all that I just might as well show tonight to make this video longer. But I was making a little something based on some things I had noticed with the Puff Daddy stuff. Just a little observation. So I wanted to go back to Rosemary's Baby and see if I had, if what I saw was like I thought I saw it. And, you know, I noticed some, some things. She made note in there that they don't just drink the blood. So we, we talk a lot. In truth, sub subject, uh, um, in truth of circles about one subject or one particular aspect of a subject. And sometimes we gloss over another. We always talk about the adrenochrome and we, we know that, is suppo that supposedly has to come from um, the life force. The life of a thing is in its blank. So that supposedly has to come from that. And, th and that which comes from not just a baby, but a baby in terror. Okay. Because, you know, if they're going to drink in adults, the, the preference is an adult that's been terrorized because the terrorization of a human being rele releases adrenaline into the blood. And the adrenaline in the blood enhances the, the, the spiritual power and they say the taste of life force for the consumers of life force. Now, Somebody say Beatles, Beatles album cover ring a bell. Yeah, the Beatles album cover with all the babies. Oh, maybe we should count them. Beatles album cover babies. See, that's what makes certain album covers so, so unique. Let's see the babies. Oh no. Why would the Beatles, why would the Beatles, Beatles, you guys, you clean cut, bowl cut young men, why the babies? And look at here, dress up like butchers. Now, here, they're like butchers in this scene. See, this is the slickness of it. I need that. The slickness of it all. Did you, did you realize that? Okay, now when they do a when they do a photo shoot, or when they come up with an album cover, usually it is from a photo shoot. Within the photo shoot, they may have shot several different versions of one scene. So the Beatles actually shot a version of this with the meat. With the meat. 
with them looking like butchers. They've got on butcher coats. And instead of just the babies with the fake blood around, it's actually the meat. There's actually meat. See? Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Because they eat the baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. Yeah. Interesting. No, we're not doing all of that. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So yes. So now we so now the secret of that revealed. Who said that? Let me give that sister her credit during women's month. What are you doing? What are you doing? I just happened to glance over there and see that was it Lloyd? I thought it was a sister's name. Was it a sister's name? I thought I saw L. Was it an L? L. It was brother. Brother Lloyd. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe we'll play some Lynn Collins on the way out just to even it up. Okay. Isn't that something? Interesting, right? And then, you know, you got, you got a good alley-oop Lloyd. I like them type of alley-oops. The dramatics. The devil is dope. What to make them? What to make them brothers from the north end decide they want to put a being, a gruesome being, on the cover? That's just that don't make no sense. What them brothers from the north end got to do with this? I didn't heard the story. They did it too. You know, a lot of the. You know, oh boy, some of you guys might watch those programs about the uh, criminal families and the big drug families and things of that nature. Well, there was a thing going on in Detroit among the big drug criminal families where the torch, like the level of torture was on the satanic level. This is what made, somebody said I didn't talk about Isham. This is what made a rap artist like Isham viable and even possible in Detroit Isham Boomin was because there was this undercurrent of well you know sometimes you have to get that gangster seriously to where like the chopping up of bodies and he rapped about that type of stuff but he walked that line even if you look at the album cover he walked that line of like dope boy it wasn't just, no, we don't want to hear none of the music. It, it wasn't, um, see, the look of the dope boy, the car of the dope boy, in the dope boy's environment. But the only difference is, talking about chopping up bodies and, you know, killing babies and all that other type of stuff that goes along with that. Well, when you sell your soul, it doesn't matter what your vocation is. <laughs> You've all got to do some of the same. You've all got to do the same things. Joe Jackson and Creedell, probably th the first time that they heard this from Tarnopol, and we're not going to say they heard it from Tarnopol because, simply because he has the, the uh, 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 complexion for the connection, but because he's the boss. He's the highest ranking person, and he's the president of a label that has a symbol that we can say is a little bit questionable. Is this a, is this a low key 13? We've talked about that before in the spelling spell, how witches will use a B and make it a low key 13. Now this is, this would be a bit of a stretch to say that that's what this is, but I'm just going to leave it there. Wick, Wiccan and witch all go together. Um, in this, in the transformer series, uh, Sam Witwicky is part of the Witwickens, which is a society of basically witches, just like Freemasons is a society of witches, whether you have the degrees and the acumen and the game about yourself to find that out and know, or you don't know. That's the fact. That's what you will find out, that you're in a coven of witches. You're in a group of witches. And you are the, you are the least informed of of the group so you can imagine how they're going to use and abuse you so i want to take some questions based on that material i also want to we're also going to 
I'm going to direct folks to some prayers and we're going to pray some prayers uh, concerning generational curses and satanic ritual abuse as well. And then we're going to say good night for the night and we're going to reconvene this weekend. So we're going to take a really short break here. We're going to play uh, a couple of ditties from my brother, uh, D Point. Um, happy belated. His birthday was March 26th. And I just wanted to uh, give him acknowledgement because he helped us to bring this channel to uh, where it is today and to give it its own identity and its own uniqueness with the beats that he helped, uh, with the beats that he supplied, which helped to make a lot of the movies that I made more digestible for some folks. So um, that's my buddy, that's my homie, and I very... Um, much appreciate him, and I ask that y'all keep him in your thoughts and prayers. You know, pray that the Lord will uh, heal him of his ailment uh, in Jesus' name. All right, y'all, so give me a short little break here, and we'll be right back on the right track, okay? And it's like that. <laughs> I want you to understand I've never run in the face of danger. And I'm not a man to learn to be a coward now.
After hearing, after hearing some very somber and serious information there, um, you know, the first thing that I want to do uh, next is I want to direct folks to some tools to use if you or someone that you love um, has indeed shown um, symptoms of or has memories of or evidence of uh, ritual trauma and abuse then we do have some prayers there's nothing too hard for the lord our god and it, it, again he is the one who delivers we ask that's all we do in prayers we ask we can go boldly to the throne of grace maybe for someone who uh it feels uh unworthy or too shy to go before the lord so we can go on others behalf we can stand in the gap for others in prayer but you have to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And you who are the patriarch over a, over a household, you know, there are certain things that you as the patriarch have the authority to do. And so you need to know how to walk in that authority. First, first you need to step out of your human shoes and step into the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior King Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. And you needn't quarrel about whatever you believe concerning that, or I can't help you. And there's been some people I've not been able to help because that's where their initial issue is. So I pray that the Lord will send you that which you need to be helped and to be able to walk in that authority. Because, see, going in that authority will ensure that you don't get white witchcraft double-crossed with, ha with half a cure. Okay? Walking in that authority will ensure that even if we don't see immediate reversal of whatever the issue in your tissue is, that we stand in Hebrews now faith, Hebrews 11 and 1 now faith, in knowing that we're going to witness the reversal of that sickness. We're going to work, witness the alleviation of that sickness. And we have to walk in full faith and belief concerning that. It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. The Father tests our belief every day that we walk and don't manifest one of those signs. How much do we really believe? And again, it's not about, you know, do I believe enough to drive something off of my neighbor? Do you believe enough to drive something off of yourself? Or someone whom you are a direct steward over, your spouse, your child, your sibling, because you're your brother's keeper. And again, who is my mother and who is my brother, but those who do the will of my father. So we're in the body of Christ are charged to look after one another. Now again, there comes a period in time where for one reason or another, I've been taken out of the equation of being able to be effectual in helping. So I want to direct you all to things that you can use, some tools, some basic tools you can use. Some of these tools have been around for some time, but never have we had the, uh, the, uh, the chance and the opportunity to... Um, take advantage of them in mass the way that we do today. And I encourage folks to use the, use the website, use the social media network, because the time is coming where that's all we're going to have. It's not a game. I've been 
YouTubing long enough to understand the behavior and when the behavior is strange. And the behavior is very strange. So, you know, we come, we're, we're coming to the end of our tenure here, but that's okay. Just in the nick of time, we have a place to go. Wouldn't it be a lovely thing to have a community where what's overstood don't have to be explained or asked for? And we can just all feel comfortable that everything going to be taken care of because everybody in the community pulls the weight. So prayerfully, if we move from YouTube completely, some of you have had the ability to take some of these videos off of YouTube, take videos off of YouTube, repost them as yours. Give credit, just like you'd repost a Steve Coakley video or a Yashkara video. That's where I'm at right now. Sample me, because I'm about to go away. But let's make sure that we can land somewhere decent that we'd like to stay. Okay? Like the spot we got thus far. Let's try to keep that spot going. Now, um, let me direct folks to some tools that you can use. Some tools that prayerfully that you can use. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to use them. One, two, one, two. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. One, two, one, two. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay, now. Let's do it like this. Um. Unplug them. Christian Community Center dot com. Isn't that easy to remember? Unplug them. Christian Community Center dot com. Hit enter. And you enter the center. Take the first stairwell, go all the way down to the library in the basement, the PDF section. Go all the way down. Now, you may actually find some, something in the video section that'll help you, like some Win Whirly. Or if you're in need of good prayer and scripture read, after tonight's broadcast... Because then, then half of none of y'all look at it when I first brought it out. You act like you need something like this now. After we didn't read something, that it, it was a little taste unsettling. And then, and then right after this, you're going to go right and watch American Horror Story. You're going to go right and watch Black Mirror. American Horror Story is really good too right now. But you're not supposed to watch them things. It defiles your eyes. <laughs> so now anyway. Because my job is counterintelligence, I, I, I have some grace in that area that I don't, I don't expect you to have. Hmm. So anyway, you pick this, pick this one right here. Only built for perfect peace. And you go to sleep like a baby. It ain't got to worry about your back. But you're going down to the basement level here. You might want to stop at Win Worley and let him talk to you. Let Win, let Win Worley talk to your little taste. And you keep going down, keep going down until you get to the library. It's all the way down here. It's all the way down here past all of this, past banned videos. Oh, Lord. To the PDF viewer. Now, we have prayers. First, first things first. We have a nice write-up on deliverance because deliverance need a write-up. 
some of, some of my brothers and sisters from the motherland have got way out of hand. And they be on there just uh, making a natural fool out of deliverance, which should not be a ministry. Deliverance is an aspect of Christian life. Like your prayer life and your word life and your worship life, your praise life, you know, you will experience deliverance and you will help to lead others to deliverance and to experience the freedom of that. Understand? Now look, sometimes people can lean into things like their signs like you know once a person may learn you know a person may be a very docile and um, uh, soft spoken and brief speaking brief spoken person a person that doesn't have a lot of words to say and they may be you know just a little on the shy side then they begin to read up on the fact that they're supposed, or the idea, the information, the information age, the knowledge that they would be considered astrologically under the Leo sign. Then they begin to lean into it. And they start to wear their hair in a big natural mane. And they walk around wearing a lot of gold around their neck and talking loud and saying nothing. They've begun to lean into it, my brothers and sisters. And sometimes people can lean into the deliverance thing too much so to where now once you, once you become performative now you risk um, spirits of drama and spirits of deception and overreaction and exaggeration all now intertwining and interweaving into what you're trying to do and it's going to tangle up everything that you're trying to do you can't do it So you want to be cautious. Now calling, asking the Lord for something that, that's not there to come out won't harm you. And if it is there and it needs to come out, asking for it to come out could help you. But one of the first things that you want to ask for, first and foremost, when, when, you, when we begin the process of prayer the first thing that we ask for is forgiveness for our sins you know let's you know keep it a buck that we know that we're coming to the Lord unworthy my righteousness is as filthy rags but out of your grace and your mercy Lord you are faithful and loving and willing to receive my prayer petition. So I'm asking now. In the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior. King Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We're asking Father that you would please. Hear our prayer petition. So now. If these things are in your family line. You want to ask. That the Lord would also. You know as Moses did for his ancestors. They said the dead know not a thing, but it is permissible to ask, Father, please forgive my forebears, my forefathers, for their trespasses, for their disobedience and for their rebelliousness in the name of Jesus. And Lord, please, any spirit that has gotten to me by way of their transgressions, Lord, I ask that you would loose me from it right now, Lord. Bind up that spirit and cast it out of me. And I ask this in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Not on my own behalf, not out of my own power. I have nothing to do with it except I have to be willing to accept it, to receive it. It is a futile thing to pray against something that somebody wants really bad. To tr try to pray against somebody's will. What you want to pray is... You know, if you have somebody that loves the brotherhood. So, oh, well, my, my, uh, my nephew, he just love it. He think it's the bee's knees. He can't get enough of it. 
Well, rather than try to pray it up off of him, and again, there's nothing too hard for the Lord our God. But for time and for time and efficiency's sake, I would say, go straight to this. Father, Father, I ask in the authority of the name of the Lord and Savior, King Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, that you would please loose my nephew from having such a taste for them degrees. Loose him, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from respect of person's spirit in Jesus' name. Loose him, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from the spirit of disobedience of having taken the oath when Jesus says, take no oath in the name of Jesus. Loose them from any agreements made with so-called Greek gods and goddesses or so-called Roman gods and goddesses or so-called Egyptian gods and goddesses or so-called Babylonian gods or goddesses or so-called Assyrian gods or goddesses or so-called Persian gods or goddesses or so-called Aztec gods or goddesses or so-called Mayan gods or goddesses or so-called Incan gods or goddesses. Or so-called Norse gods and goddesses. Loose us from every devil and demon associated with African ancestry. Oshan and Papa Shango and all the rest. From everything from the islands, Vodan. Loose us from every working of roots. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from having those things in our bloodline in the name of Jesus and from every negative entity and energy that's attached to us because of having had those things in our bloodline. Lord, please loose us from those things in the name of Jesus. Cleanse us and make us whole. Lord, we ask that you would loose the blood of Jesus and bind it to us, Lord, and wash us white as snow and wash away from us anything that needs to go. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you would please do these things according to your word in your Jeremiah 29 and 11 will for our lives, which is that we live and not die, that we prosper, even that our souls may prosper and that we have a hope in the future and a good expected end. In Jesus' name. And loose us, Lord God, from, from, from witchcraft, Lord, attached to us ancestrally, generationally, familiarly, or familiarly, Lord, witchcraft by any other name. Loose us from sorcery, loose us from conjuring, the cutting of roots. Loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God, from any form or fashion of witchcraft or witchcraft control in the name of Jesus. Father, we also ask right now that you would please bind up any and every ungodly spirit, Heavenly Father, Lord, associated with uh, being initiated into the brotherhood or the sisterhood in Jesus' name. Loose us, Heavenly Father, right now, Lord God of glory, from each and every spirit associated with taking the oath in Jesus' name. The passing of the secret word in the name of Jesus. The raising from the grave in the name of Jesus. Every blasphemous thing done, Lord God of glory, that has nothing to do with you, Lord, and that is totally anathema to the Holy Spirit and to the uh, words and instructions of Christ, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would loose us from every spirit associated with those things in Jesus' name and with every ungodly spirit, Lord God of glory, that may have been attached to us, Lord, because of our ancestors' doings. Lord, please loose us from these wherever you find them, Lord. Bind them, Lord, and cast them out in everlasting unbreakable chains. In Jesus' name, Lord, we renounce and denounce right now, Heavenly Father, Lord. We declare and we decree right now, Heavenly Father, Lord, that these things can have nothing to do with me in Jesus' name. And I have nothing to do with them in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord, that it would be so going back to the fourth and fifth generation. Because there's nothing to the, too hard for the Lord our God. He said we have not because we ask not. So we're going to ask him that. We ask, Lord, that you would please loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, God of glory. Going forward, Lord, to the fourth and fifth generation in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we ask right now that you would cut off every ancestral, generational, familial spirit, Lord, assigned to my bloodline in the name of Jesus. Lord, cut them off, Lord. Please, Lord, bring down a sword right now, Father, to sever, sever and cut every ungodly soul, tie, bind, tie, tether, and cord in the name of Jesus. And loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God, from bondage to divination in Jesus' name in any of its forms. And Father, I ask that you would guide our eyes, Lord, and lead us, Lord God of glory. According to Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 8, which says, Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your doings acknowledge the Lord thy God, and he will direct your paths. Lord, let us lean not to our own understanding, Lord, but as we acknowledge you in everything we do, Lord. 
Please, Lord, direct our paths as to how to keep our bloodline free and clean from spiritual bondage. We want complete liberation from spiritual bondage in Jesus' name, Lord. Some of us, Lord God, may have had rituals performed on us as children, things that we don't remember, things that are locked behind the amnesic barriers in the walls of our subconscious mind. Father, we ask right now that you would loose angels to go and to find any broken and shattered and fractured and fragmented parts and pieces of our soul that need to be restored, Lord, and to find those pieces, Lord, and to bring those pieces back together according to your word in Psalm 23, where it says, lead me beside still waters and restore my soul. And Lord, I speak soul restoration right now over everybody within the sound of my voice who is willing to receive it in the name of Jesus. For all of those who want to walk, walk in victory as victors and not in victimhood as victims. In the name of Jesus right now, receive it in Jesus name. Receive that you are more than a conqueror. Receive that you are to be blessed going in and coming out. Receive that you are the head and not the tail. Receive that the lender you shall be and not the borrower. Receive in the name of Jesus that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Receive it and believe it. Stand in agreement. Father, we ask right now, Lord, that you would loose us, Lord, from every tormenting and torturing spirit, Lord God, of glory, and every tormenting and torturing memory, Lord God, and loose us from every tormenting and torturing dream and every recurring dream and recurring nightmare. And loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from tormenting and torturing memories, Lord God, of glory, that hide behind the amnesic wall, Lord God, of glory. Don't let those memories break us in Jesus' name, Lord God, of glory, should they become revealed in the time of revelation according to your will lovingly and gently break the things to us that we need to know in order to receive full and complete freedom from spiritual bondage in Jesus name we touch and agree and we call it done in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the Son and now I want to direct all of you within the sound of my voice to this collection of prayers some again Prayers of prayers to cover many different things. Now, when you get here to this first prayer, don't think this is it right here, because when you get to this here, you can go over 14 pages. Can you see with your eyes? You can It's 14 pages of this if you go over here. Same thing here. You go here. You think it's one thing. It's not no one thing. This is years and years of collections. Collectivized by myself, Brother Charles, Love on Vacation, Sister Kim, a lot of peoples. And if you can't find something here, maybe you need glaces. But you got 18 pages of that. You hit that right there, 18 pages. You're going to find something to help you to spur your own personal prayer. People say, well, you know, Brother Theo, you, you, you got to do the praying. Well, No. Sometimes my prayers is answered and sometimes they're not. What you might like about me is I'm a, I'm a little thrown off. Well, I actually believe he's listening to me. Just talk like that. Talk like you really believe he hear you. I really believe he hearing me. Now, he might say no. But never in my mind is it the thought of I'm just saying words out in the air. You can get there. That might Make you feel more confident about it? I don't know how much that even has to do with it. You know, it's, it's, it's about his word more than it is yours. So it says, give him his word. Isaiah 55 and 11, his word should not return to him as void. Your word might return unto you as void and everybody else in here as void. But his word would not return unto him as void. So you give him his word throughout prayer. I think that's what others of you like is you hear how, how the prayer is all his word. He can't go against it. It's not a trick or a trap. It's the way I adapt. Oh, you gave me the parameters, Father. Father, give you the parameters. So push it, push it to the limit. My goodness. And that's war joyfully. Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Not the frustration of the Lord, the bitterness of the Lord, the disappointment of the Lord. The heaviness of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. 
Wasn't you happy last time you whooped somebody? You ever whooped somebody before? Some of you have whooped somebody before. I know, I know on here, everybody is just the holiest of rollers. I know it. Just a shining bright. Ready for salvation. Ready, ready for the kingdom. Ready for glory. Shallow. I know everybody on here. Ain't nobody never whooped nobody before. Made you feel good, didn't it? You felt good, especially if they needed the whooping. That's, well, think about that when you think about the joy of the Lord and going to battle. Go to battle like that. Don't go to battle. Oh, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get the. Thank you, Father. Like he was talking to them. You was, you, was, you was whooping them and talking at the same time. Didn't I tell you? So you do the same thing. Why are you going through the midst of it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm so glad that you've already taken care of this for me. I know you took care of it. I laid it at the foot of the cross. I ain't going to carry it around no more. Thank you, Jesus. I'm thanking you in advance. Hallelujah. That's right. Be brash like you was. When you was... When it, Tell you, be brash. Say anyhow. So yes, yeah, so now, so that's that's my suggestion. Without question, say it with your chest. Believe it. Believe it. I know Mac didn't whoop somebody. He's too big. Some somebody somebody lost their mind somewhere and, and tested him, and he had to he had to run a scrimmage on him right quick. Uh. No, joy. That's right. Joy, joy, joy to be with you. Unspeakable joy. All right. So, yeah. So, like I said, I wasn't going to keep y'all uh, tonight because we'll be back on this weekend. This was a treat because I said I wanted to get this book and we had to see that part. We had to read that part. If you want to hear more about the FBI and the IRS corruption, then let me see that in the comment section. Okay. That's what we need. Um, and, you know, I want to see more participation. Participation. I get sad when I go to the, uh, to the social media network and ain't nobody posting nothing new, which isn't, which isn't often. I think y'all doing pretty good uh making good use of it but make use of that that's y'all's 24 7 it's open 24 7 I to whoop somebody he's too big Oops, sorry that's y'all's 24 7 make use of it get together say hey y'all let yeah, the, you know yeah, me you know you right oh, be quiet you and a couple of folks can decide hey you know hey let's all come back here at such and such a time and everybody meet up at this time. We'll say, well, oh, well, I get off work at 5. Oh, well, I get off at 3.30. Okay, well, let's all meet up here at 7. At 7, we all going to meet here, and we all going to do blah, 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 whatever the case may be. I can make you a separate room, too. If some folks get, you know, really zealous about using the site and whatnot, y'all come up with a little group. You want your own little group room? i make you a group room. All oh, that's free, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, you can have more rooms. So, yeah, but, yeah, go in there and be your brother's keeper. Be your sister's keeper. Get your um, prayer experience time on the clock. Get some time on the clock. And, you know, peruse through here as you will, and I'm sure you'll find something that may enhance your prayer life. You may. You just may. And remember, all you got to do to get here is unplug them Christian Community Center. Dot com. Now, for those who are interested in the social media network, I think I think the max is 200 and we're near capacity. We're near capacity and everything is free. But it, if everything is free, you know, everything costs something. So, uh, you know, just uh, keep that in mind. And just like if you go to the community center and they don't ask you for anything, but you know that. You know, they rely on the community to keep that building open. So here, you enter Unplug Them Community Chat Room. Bam, hit that. And it'll take you in there. And it's 200. Um, I think the max is 200. And we're nearly there. And like I said, you know, y'all can talk to each other. You can post things, encourage one another. 
uh, come for prayer, ask for prayer, and all of the above uh, right here in this in this chat room, which is taking a minute to pop up because we've got a lot going on at one time and we don't want to have so much going on that we get um, knocked off of YouTube. So, yeah, we have 174 members thus far. But this will be a way for us to continue to talk when uh, YouTube shuts me down, which is around the corner. If they really want to be good and devilish, they'll probably do it in May. Give me good, give me good birthday gift. But anyhow, who cares about any of that? But we just want to be sure that we're still able to communicate fellowship and chat. All right. So, you know, I'm going to take the risk of playing, playing a few songs. But I'm telling you now, y'all, things we've been doing for a long time, I can't do now without, without some, some issues. You know, you know, I love to come on playing, playing a song. You know, you don't know. Yeah, I just, I, I'm just, I just... I understand the play. They're looking for any and everything. And that's all right. Because we're still going to do what we want to do. That's that ties. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, okay, all right. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Make sure we got the right thing going here. Okay. So, yes. So, yeah, so let's touch and agree. And we just want to ask, Heavenly Father, that you just please, Lord. Loose Psalm 4 and 8 and Proverbs 3 and 24, sweet sleep, along with Philippians 4 and 8. Good thoughts. And bind them to all of the children within the sound of my voice who would receive it in Jesus' name and believe it. And Lord, we ask not just for a sweet sleep, Lord, but we ask for sweet dreams as well, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you would loose us, Lord, from recurring negative thoughts and memories and loose us from the traumas and the heartache and the deep hurt and unresolved pain and disappointment from our past and from our childhood. Lord, please heal our deep inner child in Jesus name as we yet sleep Lord please search our subconscious minds and Lord please wash them white as snow with the blood of Jesus cleanse us with the very blood of Jesus Lord and loose us from tormenting thoughts in Jesus name and loose us Lord from torturing thoughts Lord that lie beyond behind the surface of our conscious mind and the things that torment us in our subconscious mind Father loose us from those things wherever you find them in Jesus' name. Lord, we also ask in the name of Jesus and the power of his name, Father, that you would please, Lord, bind to your servants, Lord, the comfort of the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, your perfect peace that surpasses all understanding and your perfect love that casts out all fear. Loose us from fear, Lord. Let us be able to sleep free from fear and paranoia, from night terror, from sleep paralysis, and from any interference, Lord, with our comfort as we get rest for the next day in Jesus' name. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just please, Lord, protect our minds, heal our bodies, cleanse our souls, Lord, restore our souls according to Psalm 23 as we yet sleep in jesus name and yes i touch and agree with brother jason lord loose us from foolish thoughts in the name of jesus loose us from thoughts of foolishness in the name of jesus lord loose us heavenly father lord from any thoughts to the bondage of the wisdom of man in jesus name for the wisdom of man is foolishness to god the foolishness of man is sometimes what he considers to be wisdom so lord please loose us from any of the foolishness of man even foolishness of man disguised as wisdom and lord let us cleave to the fear of god which is the beginning of wisdom lord increase us in that fear that reverent fear of you in jesus name lord heal any issues in our tissues in jesus name lord god of glory we ask for complete restoration of our bodies in jesus name as we sleep in jesus name touch your servant rihanna in jesus name lord and heal her lord god of glory of any 
ailment, Lord, and any issues in her tissues. In Jesus' name, set the crooked thing straight. Lord, please touch your servant, Minister Rebecca, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Please heal her, Lord, from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. In the name of Jesus, Lord, please restore her, Lord God of glory. In the name of Jesus, anything fractured or broken, Lord God, we ask that you would restore it in the name of Jesus, Lord, and replace it in the name of Jesus, Lord, and repair it, Lord, and renew it like the eagle's wings concerning all things in Jesus' name. We ask that you would do it, Lord, right now for your grace and for your mercy. And let her get all of the glory out of your story in Jesus' name. name. Lord, we ask that you would get all of the glory out of her story in the name of Jesus. Father, we also ask, Lord, that you would just please, Lord, loose us, Lord, God of glory, from any stumbling blocks that the enemy has placed before our way in Jesus' name. Lord, there are assignments that uh, those that the adversary has assigned to come against us, Lord, God of glory, we ask that you would cancel those assignments in Jesus' name. Loose those who are assigned to come against us from the spirits that drive them in Jesus' name and inspire them. Bind up those spirits, cast them out, and cast them down. And we ask that you would do this, Lord, in accordance with your perfect will for our lives. In your Jeremiah 29 and 11, perfect will. And Lord, let us not just walk in your permissive will, but Father, help us find our way into the groove of your perfect will, Lord, and let us stay there in Jesus' name. Father, we ask, Lord, God of glory, that you would bless the fruit of the womb in Jesus' name, Lord, of all of your daughters of Zion in Jesus' name, Lord, God of glory, especially big niece Jericho in Jesus' name, Lord, please bless the fruit of her womb in the name of Jesus, Lord, cause for the baby to be healthy and happy and anointed and appointed in Jesus' name. And Father, we ask the same, Lord, God of glory, for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ who are expecting in the name of Jesus, Lord, and we also ask, Lord, God of glory, that you would uh, bless um, those who have joined together in holy matrimony in Jesus' name, Lord God of glory, to bear good fruit in Jesus' name and to be fruitful and multiply, multiply Lord, and have, to, and have a bountiful harvest in the name of Jesus, Lord, of good fruit in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we ask these things, Lord, for the kingdom, Lord, we ask according to your word. For you said, Heavenly Father, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added in to us so father you know the things that we have need of before we even ask so we're seeking you first lord and, and your righteousness lord cleanse us of unrighteousness father heavenly father please help us lord god we're to be loose from all unrighteousness in jesus name unrighteousness in our mind and in our thinking in the name of jesus loose us from prejudices in jesus name lord and loose us from racial issues and racial thoughts in jesus in jesus name Pardon me, Lord. Loose us, Heavenly Father, from racial indiscretion and from indigestion. And loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from heartburn. And loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord, from gastrointestinal issues of any kind. Lord, and loose us, Heavenly Father, Lord God of glory, from anything that's interfering with us having uh, the comfort of the comfort of, in our body, soul, and mind. And we ask these things, Lord, in accordance with your perfect will for our lives. We ask that you'll seal this prayer with Isaiah 55 and 11 as we send this prayer up to your ears like a Holy Ghost pillar of fire and flame. We ask that it would reach you unhindered. And we ask that these prayers would come back down in the same manner, unhindered, proven to have been answered. In Jesus' mighty, matchless, holy name. We touch and agree in the name of the Lord and Savior, King Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And let the church say amen until I see you again. And, you know, it wouldn't be right if we didn't play a little praise and worship for unplug them at night so let them do what they may but we're going to go out the way we usually go out any old way um and so yes uh this hopefully the reading from this book uh for those who are curious onlookers of the illuminati in the music business conversation and maybe Maybe you just listened to this channel for the first time tonight. You'll find a lot of stuff on this channel um, surrounding that subject. Uh, I spent my own time in and around the music business that caused for me to do a lot of deep diving into the tall weeds for many years now. And so I welcome you to look through the videos on this channel and see what else might tickle your fancy. If you look at the Trick, trick series, um, perhaps trick number one, 
would be something that would interest you. Or you may like the song, write a secret series, the Illuminati and old school music. But either way, we've got something here for you. Uh, but the thing that we most importantly must do is give him the highest praise that we know. We've got to give the highest praise that we know to the true and living God. The father of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Let us lift up our voices together in full agreement that he is worthy of all of the praise. There's a need to express This river of joy Flowing in my chest I seem to come up short When talking to the Lord When all that I want to say Is wrapped up in one word Again, I just want to thank you all for listening, and I want to re reiterate to any of the, the content creators out there, shout out to Spiritual Logic, a.k.a. Hulk, uh, giving you free reign. I don't want them to be the only ones with the right to do whatever they want to do with my material. Chop up and sample and use me at will. I'd love to be the James Brown of the truth of community. Just use me. Funky drama. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, have your way 
sample, download. You know, there's a tool called U, uh, YTD Downloader. That's what I use to make a lot of my videos, uh, YTD Downloader. Uh, but it's, it's ways. There's ways to get videos from off of here. Also, uh, Screen Pal, what I used to use. It's called something different now. But anyway, steal the videos, chop them up, you know, make something out of them. Uh, keep it going. Keep it going now.
TV for that reminder that yes, our sister lyricist does have a new song, um, Glorifying the Most High, the True and Living God. You can find that in the social media network uh, where you know folks can post their own um, uh, 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 praise and worship music. Or uh, we do have a brother there, brother uh, Trevor, who posts. Uh, inspirational messages that are brought to him by God. Uh, it, it's like poetry. Um, it would remind you of things that you might see in your grandma's Daily Word magazine, you know. And he posts those, and they're very, but much deeper, much, much, much deeper, but very edifying things that he writes and posts as well. But please do go and check out our sister, lyricist, um, devoted wife and mother and soldier of the true and living Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, be sure and check her out. Give her your support. You know, show her your love because we want to show support to folks who actually give the gift that the true and living God gave to them back to him. Let's highlight that. <laughs>
Okay, real quick, I do see a question about that um, about the boat that um, hit the bridge in Baltimore. The only thing that I can say about that is that it certainly didn't seem to be organic. We talked about Aries on the show with uh, Sk- Skiba News Network, and one of the things that I was trying to point out but maybe didn't get too exact was that the season of Aries is about bloodshed and mass destruction. And, you know, so that was definitely mass destruction. Only only a couple of, you know, only. You know, it, it wasn't the usual bang for their buck that you see them get out of certain rituals, but I didn't think that it was... Um, just something that happened by happenstance or because someone was neg- negligent. I think it was something because of the Obama movie, the movie that the Obamas put out, the end of everything, whatever that was called, th- the big scene in that where the boat comes plowing through the beach, you know, that kind of reminded me of that. And I thought to myself um, that in that in that little movie that the Obamas executive produced, that they were... It was a lot of uh, double cross uh, distraction maneuvering going on where they were trying to make you think things that weren't true, like that nobody's in control. So at the end, at the end of the day, like everything that the Illuminists put out, it's to be put out for confusion, to coagulate, not to solve, the pointing down of the Baphomet, not the pointing up. So, you know, we don't know exactly what it means, but... I do believe that it had something to do with uh, uh, their plans, you know, and somehow or another we're going to we're going to figure it out in the next few days how that connected with the movie. And perhaps within the movie, each act of the movie is uh, foretelling a plan that the elite are going to enact at some time. We saw one of the acts of the movie perhaps enacted. So I don't know, but we'll all see. But much love to y'all. Check you out this Saturday. Uh, please show your support for this channel and for this program and join up with the um, Unplug em, uh Mighty Social uh, Network because we'll be off of YouTube before you know it. Uh, also, check out the website, Unplug em Christian Community Center dot com. Peace. One, two, one, two,
you can find me.